Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So today I thought I'd do a roundup of three royals, uh, Prince Charles, Prince Harry, and Queen Elizabeth. So I just want to get their take. I want to try to get inside their mind how they're feeling about this whole debacle that's taking place because it's obviously huge importance to all three of them. I've left William out of it because we're just dealing with the, uh, the principles of the issue, which are right now uh, the Queen, uh, Charles, her son, and her grandson, uh, Harry. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so this is the newest deck I've got. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the um, the classic uh, Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person, Wise, has had their input into it. And uh, th what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box... I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And, you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks it's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific... A synopsis of uh, how uh, this uh, uh, Rider weight uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about author Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic uh, theory and history of all of that. Um, it, is, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the cards. So... I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth-shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny, and um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close-up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique -y kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems, and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color. And I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in the typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at when, before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle. or, or And then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them a lot. So this will be my newest deck. Now I thought what I'd do today is kind of do a royal roundup, the British royals, a kind of a roundup, but just on three of them, Charles, William, and uh, Queen Elizabeth. Um, just a quick uh, full Celtic cross on all three of them and um, see what comes of that. I'm just going to ask the generic question uh, uh, that's relating to the Harry and the Harry situation. We're just going to say uh, related to Harry. I'm going to leave Megan out of it altogether, and um, and see if we get any I don't know any insight as to uh, where uh, these three folks where they're thinking uh, is on that problem. So I'll spread these out quickly, and we'll take six cards right off the top. But this first one is going to be Prince Charles. So one, two, three. This will be Prince Charles uh, with Harry. What is his uh, wish for this thing, for this resolution? Four, five, six. What's interesting to me is that, I mean, you know, how many of the royals in history, in our recent history, in our modern history, have, and even in the ancient history of the royals, have had... Uh, 
issues with whom they were going to marry and how it would affect the crown. And I mean, Henry VIII ended up killing a bunch of wives until he uh, found the one that was right. None of them ever were. Um, the fellow who advocated uh, so that uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, father uh, was um, um, became uh, the king um, again wanted to marry a divorced American, and that didn't work out. So he's uh, abdicated off to the side. And now uh, Charles uh, married Diana Spencer, uh, really just to get an heir to the throne, and, and continued on his long-term love affair with Camilla Parker Bowles, whom he should have married from the beginning. I mean, there should have never been a question about that. So, so let's see, what is Charles's take on the Harry situation? That's just the, the best way I can uh, frame it. Charles's take on the Harry situation. Signifier card for this then. Okay, so these are plans. So this, the, the two of wands are actions, motion, uh, planning. And uh, so this fella is looking out over the horizon. So I can easily uh, see that this would be Charles trying to determine what are the future plans of the monarchy and uh, so there's that you know what's happened is they kind of lay out i would presume uh, in their minds how things are going to work out with the royals that they have uh, in attendance to uh to take care of the uh, the, the monarchy and so once uh, harry and megan bailed then they're left with their short-term plans kind of cut short the challenge to short-term plans prince charles what is he, what's his thinking on the harry situation embattlement okay so this is a seven of wands and the seven of wands is really having to take on these issues and decide um, how you're going to deal with them so uh, long-term plans is all of a sudden um, disrupted the basis of the, of the reading then is the emperor of course so charles is trying to um i guess uh, keep in mind his role as the you know the head of, of this monarchy as it's coming up you know still it's his mom but this is what he's thinking about he's i would imagine he's thinking about his future his, how this is going to work out with these, this new twist in the past of this reading is the empress so this could be none other than the queen i think so this is the queen in the past charles uh, thinking about his future in the sky of this reading then is the knight of swords and you know i always think of the knight of swords uh, uh, in relation to the four uh, royal cards at the top of every uh, suite. So the, the king, the queen, the knight, and the page. Uh, the knight being the one who is going to fight for the right of the monarchy. So in the sky, uh, this being the knight, I would say again that this has to be uh, Charles as he is uh, thinking about uh, his uh, responsibility to the crown. And then the uh, final outcome of the first part of this Celtic cross is going to be uh, yeah distribution of wealth and it's the dis and it's like I said this is the distribution of not necessarily the wealth but the distribution of the responsibilities of the crown uh, with the working royals that he has so it's interesting uh, and let's go right to the self of Charles right now when we're thinking about Harry Charles's self in relation to Harry okay so that is going to be stabbed in the back. Okay, so he's feeling very betrayed, of course, by Harry. That's pretty raw. Uh, that's in the environment of what? Feeling betrayed by Harry in the environment of the Knight of Wands. So I'm going to say this is Harry uh, and his plans. So considering uh, Harry's plans that he put himself ahead of the monarchy uh, maybe contributes to this uh, feeling of betrayal. In the hopes and the fears for all of this, then, is uh, practicing honing your craft, the uh, 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 Eight of Pentacles. So yeah, so that's what he's done. He's nailed down all the all the ways that uh, he will need to approach the monarchy, and now he has a special kink that he has to work out again before he can uh, carry on with his craft. And then the sky of this reading, from right here, the final outcome of everything is just feeling embattled, but knowing that you have to continue on with your struggle. So just to recap quickly, Charles in relation to Harry, it's a Harry situation. He's signified as someone who has made some plans, some short-term plans, and then all of a sudden he's become embattled. He sees himself as the uh, emperor because, of course, the queen is on the way out. And in the sky of this, uh, we have him really feeling as if he's the guy who's got to bring uh, the, the justice to the situation as he sees fit and dole out the responsibilities appropriately. Uh, regarding immediately, he feels stabbed in the back by Harry, who's working on his own plans. And now Charles has to kind of retool uh, what's happening with the monarchy. And that's leaving him feeling uh, embattled. Perfect sense. 
So just for a quick recap before I go on to um, the second part of this, which will be uh, Harry, I think. Yeah, we'll do Harry next, uh, and then we'll do the Queen. So just a re quick recap is uh, Charles feeling like his short-term plans have just been, you know, trampled. He sees himself as the leader because why? Because the queen is on the way out. And um, But uh, more personally, he's stabbed in the back by Harry, his feelings. And now he has to retool everything to try to determine how the monarchy is going to go forward. And again, leaving him feeling embattled, but knowing that he's got more fights uh, ahead of him. So that's what I see as this first little part of this three-part um, reveal. So now we're going to go and we're going to talk about Harry. Where is his mind in this whole debacle? You can't think that he's wanted to purposefully um, betray his family, um, cause issues, um, but that he's fell, fallen in love with someone and, uh, and, and wants to see their life go forward in a way that they both appreciate. And so now we're going to look at Harry. How is Harry feeling? Harry, 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 about this embattlement, about this discourse, about this um, unhappiness that's created within the royal family for a lack of understanding. I mean, I guess the, the idea is stiff under lip, uh, stiff upper lip, uh, carry on, uh, keep your emotions to yourself, and continue your duties. You belong to us, as in the royal family. And how dare you? consider going off and doing something uh, different uh, separately and of course blame is going to land squarely on his wife no matter who it was um, because she would be seen as someone who needs to uh, toe the line with her new husband but then it doesn't seem like there's enough training for these new folks diana got so uh, bogged down in the whole system uh, let's just see how this is going to work for harry so harry right now how are you feeling about this insanity uh, with the family? My goodness, family problems, always there. We're going to take six cards. One, uh, way down here, okay. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, Harry, Harry, Harry. Wait, oh, wow, now that's interesting. I dropped the card on the floor, so it's going to alter the... Um, the sequence of them, but I, again, I just feel like these things work out the way they should. The cards are going to reveal themselves in the way they want to be revealed. So this is telling me, uh, Harry, what is the signifier for you and this big rift with your family? Signifier for Harry? Oh, reversed. I'm so uh, unhappy uh, with reverse cards, and just because I don't have uh, confidence in my um, uh, interpretation of reverse cards, but I mean, I'll have to go through with it. So I'm going to tell you what it is upright, just to kind of get my thinking uh, right towards this card. If this were upright as a signifier, the uh, Seven of Cups is talking about, they like to call this card illusion and delusion, but lots of choices, having to decide which way you're going to go. But for me, this card being reversed says, no, I don't have any choices. There's really only one thing I could do for my happiness in my future family. I think this is going to be reversed too because it's one of the cards I dropped. So let's see how it works out. Yep, and there it is. The challenge to that is the devil in reverse. Now, if the devil was upright, again, not having any choices. If the devil was upright, and remember, these are my definitions. You may listen to other readers. You may have an interpretation on your own of what these cards mean. But I can only uh, explain to you my relationship with the cards and how they appear to me. And you're more than welcome to use your own interpretations. But I always try to color these readings with some sort of empathy, some sort of uh, good uh, interpretation. Now, the challenge of not having choices is uh, the devil in reverse. But the devil upright means being chained to um, some lesser intentions. In reverse, the challenge to this is unchaining himself from the, ch from the uh, monarchy. That's got to be it. So, and not necessarily, I don't think, the monarchy, but for the um, antiquated, uh, strict, um, convoluted, um, I guess, um, entanglements of the monarchy, monarchy. So unchaining himself from that. And the base of this reading, oh, thank you for being uh, upright, and look how appropriate this is, is death. And it's not death, but it's the end. It's the end of a cycle. So not having choices to make, having to get unchained, and the end of that cycle. And in the past of this reading is the King of Swords. And of course, that's perfect, because in the past of this reading is he was chained to the monarchy 
even though he is uh, second, you know, he was second for so long because it was just him and William. And then once William has to have a family, he starts falling behind in his importance to the monarchy. And so, yeah, in the past of this is feeling, you know, the truth and the justice of the monarchy is somewhere in the past. In the sky of this reading, then, is, ah, working together. The three of coins is working together for a common goal of value to be displayed to the world. And that's exactly, I think, what he's trying to uh, achieve here, some common uh, value that uh, that he can work on uh, with those that he chooses to to uh, pair with uh, uh, to make some value out of his life. And then the likely outcome for this first part is that hangman is it's in suspension. You know everything is stalled because of this unrest to a certain extent because he can certainly go on and do good in the world. But let's face it, he's got to get his the security of his family money wise uh, nailed down first. Okay, now the last four cards will be the self, the self of Harry in relation to this uh, disharmony uh, with his uh, his family. Uh, the signifier for that then, yeah, it's embattlement. It's the uh, nine of wands, and this speaks about the fellow who has really been through it, but he's holding, just like Charles, he's holding on to his, um, his plan because he knows that he has to get through this and work through all of these issues. That's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of celebrations. Okay, so this is lovely because him and his family and his son, they're having celebrations. And listen, let's face it. Anytime you've got a tough road to hoe, when you've got little triumphs along the way, that I think that sustains you towards the next uh, battle, I guess. The uh, hopes and the fears for all of this, ah, thief in the night. He's not willing to have his justice, his truths, and his rules stolen from him. He's left a couple of things behind, but he's, he's going off uh, with his own truths, his own rules, his own justice uh, to kind of recreate that somewhere else. He's just walked away from, from what was left behind, left him at the camp. And then the final outcome for all of this is going to be the Hierophant. And that is, um, the Hierophant are rules um uh, a, a a structure that you will follow to uh, accomplish your goal or to lead your life you know this would be government this could be the church i feel like these are the this this hierophant here is the new hierophant the new rule the new structure the new goals that harry uh is probably going to see uh, that he has to establish uh, for his new uh, uh life that he's uh, trying to create he's trying to manifest so now for this part, for Harry, as to how he feels about all this, I came out with two reverse cards. They fell on the floor, and when I picked them up and put them back in the stack, they came out reversed. I'm telling you, Tarot knows how it wants to be read, and it makes sure it happens that way. For me, anyway. So uh, when those cards came back up, the signifier was the um, Seven uh, of Cups uh, reversed, which uh, if it were the other way, it's uh, you know, a lot of choices. But this way, there's no choices to make, none whatsoever. And it was in the, the challenge to it was the devil in reverse. So unshackling yourself from those uh, chains uh, that you felt he was shackled to. And then uh, the, the base of that reading was the death card, which is the complete end of a cycle. I mean, it's done. This is over. This won't go on the way that the royal family wants it to. And everybody just needs to shift and adjust to that. Um, so also significant in this was in the sky, we had him with the Three of Pentacles working together to produce something of value for public display. And, uh, but at the moment, uh, the, the, the short-term outcome is just being suspended, hung in place for right now. The self of this showed Harry as being embattled, looking for short-term um, uh, uh, celebrations, which you'll find with his family. And then uh, feeling like he's had to steal away his own truths and justices, leaving a couple of things behind to create a new life. And then the new life has manifested itself in this card of the Hierophant. And so I believe this is Harry's new life that he's trying to uh, uh, set up. And now we're going to talk about the third part. And this is Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, because her take will be very different from everyone else's. Uh, in regard to this issue. And I've lost the count of how many cards I'm trying to reintegrate into the pack. So I'm just going to stop with this one and hope that I've got them all uh, put back into the way they should. So Queen Elizabeth. So, you know, she certainly has seen, I mean, the very um, um, issue that we have here. We have Prince Harry has married 
an American divorcee. That's exactly the situation that brought Queen Elizabeth eventually to the throne. Uh, her father's brother uh, wanted to marry an American divorcee and, uh, and actually on his own chose to abdicate the throne, pretty much like Harry has decided that he has to abdicate uh, his royal uh, roles. Very interesting. So Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, it can't be lost on you, all the controversies with your sister Margaret's uh, marriage, because that was a big story. If you don't know about that, you should look it up and, and see how it relates to all of this. With her daughter, Princess Anne's uh, marriage and divorce, uh, uh, Andrew's marriage and divorce, uh, her uh, marriage, which I'm going to tell you, in any other situation besides the one she was in, Uh, if she were had to marry someone who behaved the way uh, the Prince uh, of Edinburgh did, uh, that marriage might not have lasted. But they were just in a situation where there was no choice except it had to last. And it turned out, if we all realize this, these, these little, they don't seem little at the time, but these, these problems that just seem like the end of the world, if you will wait, if you will work through the issues in the long term, it's usually better to try and solve the problem and come to a reasonable sane uh, solution that's not mired in ancient rules. It's, it should be uh, docked in uh, what's right and true and justice for you. So the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, give me a connection spirit. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Queen Elizabeth. What is her take on the Harry debacle? So we're going to see what is the self of Queen Elizabeth as it relates to this Harry uh, horror. So, okay, stabbed in the back. Obviously, she's feeling betrayed, and uh, of course she would. She's lived her entire life devoted to service and expecting the other royals to understand and, 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 and do their part. Stabbed in the back. The challenge to that, ah, uh, is the tower. And so the challenge to that is worried about the monarchy, you know, falling apart. Of course, it's like anyone, when, you do, when you've inherited something, you want to pass it on to the next generation in as good a condition as you got it or better. And, uh, and um, it's like anything, if you've inherited a nice tea set or, or whatever's important to you, you don't want to pass it on with pieces broken or parts missing or having destroyed it completely. So this, she's feeling stabbed in the back at the very end of her life, the end of her reign, uh, and worried about the uh, terror moment for the monarchy. I don't think that this uh, indicates that the, the monarchy is uh, going to fail. I think it just indicates, like I said, what are what is her take on the situation? What are her worries? The base of this reading, then, is the Knight of Pentacles. She has been a sturdy, steadfast um, knight for the value of of this monarchy she has devoted her entire life as she swore she would when she was I think 21 years old and uh, so there we go in the past of this reading we have surprises so we have the page of cups uh, of, of compassion emotion it's said that Harry is one of her favorites and uh, for this surprise to come up is you know just something else to deal with and the sky of this reading for Queen Elizabeth is balancing you know getting it right deciding how are we going to make this work for for the people that you love and for the country that you're responsible for and you love also? And then the uh, final outcome for all of this are secrets being revealed. And that's the moon card. And of course it is. The secrets have to come out in the open. I don't care what you're doing in your life. If you're harboring secrets from the, someone or the people who are important to you, those secrets are going to come out or they're going to fester. So let's see what are the final four cards for Queen Elizabeth and the Harry debacle. The uh, self of that, again, look at that, is just feeling embattled. This woman has gone through so much in her life, but it has been her role, hasn't it? And then the um, environment that that's in is, again, of distributing the wealth, distributing the value, making sure that there's some fair distribution of the of the of the value of what's happened here. Um, the uh, hopes and the fears for all of this then is short term plans. You know, her planning is short term, but with an eye to the longer term um, um, existence of the monarchy. And then the final outcome for all of this is going to be the King of Cups really becoming, because she is the king, she's the queen, she's the head, she's the top, 
compassion is finding some sort of a balance where she exits as the compassionate ruler that you know in her heart she wants to be. So again, for the queen then, the signifier of that was just feeling betrayed, totally, endlessly betrayed with the worry of the monarchy uh, uh, on her heels. Um, she has been the steadfast knight of the value of that institution that she has uh, was thrust upon her, the responsibility of which was, was pushed onto her, and she accepted it. And uh, all the surprises that come along with it with this page of cups and that fish jumping out of the out at the last minute. She's found a balance or trying to seek a balance. That's what she, the highest hope is to find a balance for all of this. And uh, in the end, uh, the secrets being revealed is inevitable. The self of her in this was, again, so embattled, trying to find a way to distribute the uh, value that uh, she's responsible for. Her short-term plans that she has now with an eye towards the future of the monarchy and leaving this world as the compassionate uh, king that she in her heart uh, knows that she is. I think that was a pretty powerful uh, three-person uh, Celtic crosses. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.